all the big calls on all the big races. Welcome back. It's time for another classic edition of What a Shout, filmed somewhere in the capital on a Thursday. You're probably watching this at 6 p.m. or beyond. Welcome along, everyone. Dave Orton, thrilled to be back in the seat. What a weekend of action we have got. All over the place we go, incredibly over the Irish Sea for another 2,000, 1,000 guineas double for you. Don't forget this is brought to you now by the Members Club at the Racing Post. It's a like, subscribe, comment, and share show. Put your thumbs up, get your comments in below. That's how it does. We love to read those naps. We've got a great guest for you coming this week as well, and a stellar panel. If you're not a member yet of the Racing Post Club, why not? <laughs> Got him 50% off for your first three months. Get involved, right? Stellar panel, something of a different panel. Shall we get into it? Roger Varian to come after Paul Keeley comes back on the show. Nice and yeah. tanned, Kills. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling well, feeling good. Uh, you you are on the mend. Uh, I am on the mend. I don't think I was actually that ill, to be honest. No. <laughs> a bit of a, <laughs> Just an excuse uh, not to come uh, in last week. Yeah, a bit of trap wind or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, exactly. all well, we're all going I'm all through good. it. I'm all good. Yeah, yeah, all good. The ticker right. is fine, so I'm told. Well, it's an exciting time, isn't it? How's the radar at the minute? Uh, in and out, I'd say. All right. I'm not not um, really firing them in, but uh, I don't think I'm far away. Yeah, for people that are new to the show, kills you tend to look at a favourite, don't you, and try and get them beat. That's yeah, when you're trying yeah, to get funds with that. I, I don't. You know, it's one of those things. I don't take a great deal of interest in betting at short prices. I don't see yeah. the. I don't see the point in it myself. I mean, it's just. It's just the way I am. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with backing favourites. If you think you've got a six to four shot that should be evens, I mean, you should be piling in, but it's just not the sort of thing that I feel comfortable doing, so I don't do it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thrilled to say that we can beam up north because the betting editor himself, Quizmaster Keith Melrose, joins us. Keith, welcome along. Back, I should say, to Watch a Shout. This is the first one since I had you with when we did our Handicappers Cheltenham one. It was really well received, that. You're going to come at it from figures as well, but you don't mind backing a shorty, do you? No, I mean, there's a. I'm a little bit like Keels naturally. I will sort of err away from favourites generally. But if there's one that's, yeah, as Keels says, I'm a little bit more inclined to find that six to four shot that should be 10 to 11 than, than maybe he is. And sometimes you just can't get away from it. And there's actually one running this weekend that's a really good example of that. Oh, he's teased it. Uh, Absolutely knows the game, doesn't he? I love it. Absolutely. All right. Before we get to that, then, here's what you've got coming up on this weekend's show. A great panel is joined by Roger Varian, Premier Trainer, joins us from his new market base. Runners all over the place, including a classic contender. We'll be previewing five from domestic, of course, over to that car race at 3.40. It's an absolute belzer. A load of Brits go off and represent our new market form there before those all-important weekend naps. Right then, shall we beam into new market? As promised, Premier trainer Roger Varian joins us back in the line. This is something of an annual appearance now for Roger, I'm thrilled to say. Good morning to you and your team, Roger. Yeah, good morning, Dave. How are you? Very, very well indeed. 20 winners on the board, then listed success this week. Uh, loads coming up. We've had a couple of classics as well. You had some fancied runners in that. We'll get to them and your runner in Ireland as well. I mean, you look on the website now, viewers, there are varying runners all over the place. So we will do our very best to hone in on what we think are the most interesting for you. What, what has 2023 been like so far, Roger? Yeah, it's been busy, Dave. Um, we've had plenty of runners. We've had, uh, you know, we're on the board with a nice number of winners. I don't feel we've quite hit our groove yet, but I think there's been loads of promise from a majority of the horses. I think a lot of them have needed their first run. And, um, you know, hopefully there's plenty of winners around the corner. Let's talk about some horses that have run then, Roger, if that's all right. Um, in reverse, shall we go? I see you managed to get a first two-year-old winner off the board. Was that like the fifth time of asking or something like that? Is that Jabara? She looked pretty useful. Yeah, we like her and, you know, we hope she she would have won as she did. She'd been working very nicely. 
Well, hopefully she's a filly who can go on and compete in the Albany at Royal Ascot for us. OK, the Albany coming up, always a hot race then. Uh, a horse that I really like, Roger, and, and despite the fact he was beaten, he, I thought he ran a massive race in the London Gold Cup, Exo Planet. I, I, I thought he ran huge because that was a horrible draw for him. Yeah, no, I like that horse as well, Dave, and I think he's, you know, he ran well on debut in the heavy ground, um, you know, at Newbury Spring Meeting, and I thought his run on Saturday in London Gold Cup, like you, I thought it was a huge run. 16 to 16, we, we probably had our hands tied, we dropped in, rode him to finish, and yeah, I thought he was coming with a winning run, he didn't quite um, get it done, but I think he'll win a nice race through the summer, and I think fast ground, which he hasn't had yet, when he gets fast ground, he'll be even better. Yeah, a lot of people thinking about that horse. It was a horrible draw of yours, wasn't it? And he, we saw that inside angle on ITV and he came and he headed the winner and just, I think he's got a lot of speed, that horse, for a mile two horse, that's for sure. He's, he's exciting. Uh, we, we, we've seen a couple of runners for you in the Guineas, Roger. And Sakir is a horse that all our viewers will be thinking, come on, Dave, ask him about Sakir. It, it, it's one of those, isn't it, Roger, where you've got a Mill Reef winner coming into the, into the spring. You're wondering whether they get a mile. I noticed that you haven't tried him in any of these Commonwealth Cup trials. Is, are you thinking the mile is what? I mean, if you look at the pedigree, it's all about staying on the damn side. Yeah, well, his next run is going to be in the Commonwealth Cup, Dave. Oh. That's, that's very much the plan. You know, he looked a very fast horse last year. You know, he trains with a, an awful lot of speed. And um, I don't know if we truly found out uh, whether he got the mile at Newmarket because it was such a such a wet day, very technical conditions. The race itself was very messy. But I think the, the overall feeling post Guineas was to come back to six furlongs and um, he'll go straight to Ascot. You, you can be in danger with these horses, Roger, can't you, when you're not totally sure. I mean, you can mess around over a mile and then go back to sprinting a little bit later on. I imagine with the training regime, all sorts of different things need to happen, do they? Yeah, it can be a bit um, confusing at times, but I, I think we, you know, we hoped he would stay in the guineas on, on faster ground. Who knows, he might well have done, but to me, he didn't. He made a big, big move. He was probably the wrong side of the track. I think if he would have stayed, he'd have run on and been fourth. I didn't think he quite got home a final half furlong. And um, the way he trains, the way he looks, the way he ran, you know, over six furlongs last year, you know, to me, uh, he'd be very comfortable coming back in trip and we'd be very excited about him for the Commonwealth, you know, at Royal Ascot. Well, I'm sure you will be. All right. I, I, always a sizzling race and uh, what a race that's become. All right, it's been breaking news for you there, guys. We thought he might stretch up to the mile still, Roger. So great to get that insight there. Talking of sprinters then, should we look at the Temple Stakes on Saturday? You've got two going. Mick Barr, he was really progressive last year. He's a much bigger price than your newly inherited the Platinum Queen, who's on the many people's lips out there, Roger. How did that come about? Yeah, Northern Farm... Northern Farm purchased her at the December sales last year and, and asked if I'd train her. Of course, I was delighted to do so. Um, I have to say, Richard Farr, he's been uh, an absolute gent. Um, always been helpful with advice if, if needed. She's not a straightforward filly. She's very highly strung. I wouldn't say she's the easiest to train. I would take my hat off to what Richard achieved with her last year. But she's very talented. Um, I think the talent is still there from, from what we're seeing. Uh, I think she might need a run. Um, we're sort of getting to know her. Uh, it looks a good starting point. We'd love to get her to, to Ascot for the King's Stand. She needs to run beforehand, so this is the obvious race. Uh, Holly Doyle takes a ride. Holly hasn't sat on her this year with us, but she knows her fairly well from last year. So, you know, that, uh, that all made sense. And, you know, we're very much looking forward to getting her started. Mm, yeah, I guess it will. Be, it will be that that flying five, it? and the king's down looks a little bit hotter. But she, you know, she's now Bay winner, one point two million. Then Roger, so a little bit of pressure on, I'm assuming. But I guess that they bought her for breeding purposes. But uh, you're obviously hopeful that there's another top one in her. Of course, um, you know she's she's a Group One winner. So you know we we we, we want her to uphold her. I guess uh, her form and her reputation and add to her CV if we possibly can. You know, ultimately, yes, I think she probably was bought uh, for her future as a mayor. But, um, you know, if we can add a nice race to that CV, we'll be delighted. 
She's up against another two-year-old filly, of course, in Drama Ties, who had a sort of similar sort of campaign, and we're, we're waiting to see where that one tra uh, trains on. You're in stall seven then, Holly Doyle on. Ray Dawson, who's been having a really good month of May for Ray so far, Roger, isn't it? He's in stall three. He's also really like this chap. Now, Ray's a good jockey. He's doing well. Um, you know, he's, he's one or two nice, nice horses away from really breaking through. And, uh, you know, he's in with us... Um, you know, a few mornings a week. It made sense for him to take the ride on Midbar. He was back with, with David going to the car to ride Darren. So, you know, Midbar, he's a, a nice horse. He, you know, like a filly, he, he might well need his first run of the season, but um, he might well prefer a bit more ease in the ground as well, Midbar. He, but he's a solid horse. He should he should have a good year this year as a four-year-old. I think he can improve on what he did last year. But this would very much be a starting point for him. I think he could be a very fun horse indeed. And, and these sprinters, when they've shown themselves that they can get into these races, they are fun, aren't they? There's plenty of races out there, and you can sort of, I suppose, aim towards something. And he, like, like I say, I remember a couple of runs at Sandown last year. He's a, he's a strong traveller, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's got loads of speed. He, he likes to warm into his race. You know, I thought his win at Newbury in the autumn in the, um, the World Trophy, the Group 3, was, was a fine example of how... It, he can make up ground over five furlongs. You, know, you need a quick horse to be able to do that. So he's very talented, quite profitable. Profitable never really got going until he was a four-year-old. So, you know, we'd be very hopeful that Mick Barr, he can, you know, take another jump up the ladder. You know, whether it will be on Saturday, I'm not sure. I think the, the fast ground and the, you know, the flying five at Haydock, yeah, I, I could just see him being a touch rusty on Saturday, but I, I do think he's in for a good year. Let's just keep with the sprinters, if you don't mind, Roger, before we go and look at the uh, one thousand, uh, the 2,000 guineas in Ireland, I should say. Dragon Symbol's a horse that uh, that was very interesting last year and another horse that you inherited. Are there any plans for him? He's had a little setback in the spring, um, Dave, so he, he won't be out for a while. OK, all right. Well, we shall hope you get him back in one piece. He's obviously very, very talented. Let's go then, shall we, to the Curra at 3.40 and Charin takes his place. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, Roger, you'll be hoping he comes back to the Newbury form, where it was obviously pretty much franked, wasn't it, in the French 2000 guineas. Uh, what was his issue at, at Newmarket? Was it track? Was it? I mean, we know he acts on the ground. Did it come a bit too soon? Yeah, a bit of a head-scratcher, really. Very inconclusive, Dave, which is why we're giving the mile another try. Um, yeah, you watch that guinea's back. I've watched it back, you know, a ton of times. It was just messy. You know, the high numbers were getting in each other's way. There was this, you know, high side. You know, Karen ran a bit keen, which I never thought he'd ever do. He's a very relaxed, laid-back horse. He races behind the bridle. And it was, for me anyway, very inconclusive. You know, whether he got home, he didn't get home, he handled the track, he didn't, he liked the ground, he didn't. You know, you just couldn't really uh, gain anything positive or negative from a run. So, yeah, you could make a strong case for, for either race. Obviously, he's a Group 2 winner over six furlongs. You know, we could have uh, justifiably come back to six furlongs. But, you know, we really felt when he ran in the green and that he would stretch out to a mile. I think with uh, Newmarket Guinea's been so inconclusive, such a messy race it was, we felt he deserved another shot at a classic. And I think if we can just draw a line through the Newmarket run, you know, we'd be very much excited about his prospects at the current. Yeah, you'd be half the price if you hadn't gone to Newmarket because, of course, you know, it, like I say, that Isaac Shelby form is there uh, to see. He did some strong work at the finish, didn't he? And uh, you're in stall six, so you've got options there. We wish you well with him. There's loads else happening throughout the weekend, of course. Let's pick out a couple. Voodoo Queen looks quite interesting. Uh, she's, she'll be a big prize, though, in the Bronte Stakes up at York. Yeah, she'll be a filly to watch, I think, Dave, on Saturday. She's a lovely filly. Um, she's a touch unlucky, but she hasn't got black type already. But um, yeah, she shapes like she relish for step up in trip. She'll be very comfortable on the fast ground. She probably ran better than her finish position, which suggests um, in the Daisy Warwick at Goodwood. She's only just coming to herself. I think the favourite will be hard to beat, but I should be disappointed if she wasn't knocking on the door for the placings. You've got El Drama, I see, at Goodwood earlier in the day, uh, Roger. We haven't seen him since May, Dan. And uh, you're persevering with this chap, aren't you? And uh, again, in his early days, we all thought this was going to be a world beater. 
he's a nice horse. I mean, he was only just touched off in the, the Group 1 Jebel Hatter in March. Uh, he ran respectably in the Dubai turf. I think, again, he, he's sort of in between trips, really. We're going 10 with him, but he could come back to a mile. He's in great form. I don't think he's ever looked better. We'll go in 10 because we want some direction for the summer. And um, I would expect him to run well. He's training really well. One more horse, if you don't mind. Uh, and that's Zayn Al Arab. Is that how I pronounce that? The Shabwell house, uh, the Shabwell horse, who's been gelded since we last saw him. And, and uh, uh, another horse, Roger, that I'm expecting more of this year. Am I right? Well, I hope you're right. And uh, I would expect more from him. I'm not sure if we'll see it on Saturday. He's taken a long time to come to himself through the spring. He looks well, but uh, I think the run will, you know, put him right and make him look better. His work has been satisfactory, but not electric. I'm not saying he can't win, but I, I would, you know, I would think the run would just put him right. It, so it sounds like, Roger, that, that basically high to summer is when the Varian stable will be expected to be in top gear. It's almost like a lot of these horses, they're kind of like Platinum Queen, for example, take some fizz out of it. Of course, you'd love to win the table stakes. It's a great stepping stone uh, for the King's Dam. But we're just getting the feeling that a couple are sort of putting themselves back on track this weekend. Would I be right? I think that's right, Dave. Yes, it's been a, a funny old spring with a cool temperatures and a wet weather. And... Um, you know, I think the way they've been running has been sort of suggesting that they're, you know, a week or two from absolutely peaking. And, you know, it's it's lovely to have a winners now, but, you know, hopefully it's getting them out and getting their season started. You know, having them benefit from a run, it's a long summer and we're only just dipping into it. So, you no, know, we've, we've got a lot of nice horses and I think we're set up for a good season. The horse is out this weekend. As we've spoken about, you know, I would expect him to run well and hopefully we can have a winner or two, but it'll definitely be, be better going forwards. Well, I'm sure you hit the back of the net with a couple of them, Roger, and we thank you very much for your time again here. We had a couple of gremlins in the system earlier on, so Roger's been very patient with us. And this is where Dave Autumn always pushes his luck at the end. This is a traditional end for Roger, and I'll see if I can get a smile out of him. If there's one horse for the viewers to maybe have a fiver on, Roger, no one's listening, just me and you. <laughs> I, I, I would have a fiver each way on Voodoo Queen at York. I, I would think she'll relish the, you know, the trip and the track and, and the conditions. Watch that 20 to 1 evaporate at 6pm when this show goes out. Roger, it's always great fun. I wish you and the family well for the rest of the year. Maybe see you at Royal Ascot with a, a win next to your name again. Great to give us the news about Sakir as well. Thanks, Dave. There you go then. I knew I'd crack a smile eventually. Uh, great to have Roger and the team on this morning. Runners absolutely everywhere. We've heard about what he thinks of Charon's chances in the 340. That will be our final race preview, of which we're now about to start and find out exactly what Keith and Kills think. And we start with the Silver Bowl then, up at Haydock on a really good day. Temple Stakes Day up there. Strong handicap this Kills. Covey at the start, uh, unbeaten for the Gosdens. Defence of Fort for Peter Chapel Hyam. James McHenry really... Um, progressive sorts in this as ever. They can take it on to Royal Ascot and beyond, can't they, the winners of this? Oh, they can do, yeah. It's very often a guide to the Britannia. Um, there has been a winner of it. It's quite a while ago now, I think. Uh, Huey Morrison trained horse, whose name I'd forgotten. Uh, I'm sure Keith will remember it. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, the Covey is, is obviously interesting. You know, trained by the Gosdens, unbeaten, won an absolute canter last time. Only thing is, he got a mark of 94, and the, the two horses that followed him home were, were beaten in Class 6 company next time. So unexposed. The race is cut up because it was full of soft ground horses yeah. at, the, at, the, at the five day stage and, and, and it's all different now. So so it's going to be quick ground. I quite like the look of defence of four. One first time out in a very, very good novice race at Ascot that worked out really, really well. Some seriously uh, highly rated horses behind him and he thrashed all of them. And I think next time he just probably wasn't quite ready for the step into Group 3 company. Uh, and the time after that, he ran a bottom. Was that was the Solario, wasn't it? That was the Solario. He didn't run badly. Yeah, he didn't run badly I remember seeing him in that. He was, he was fourth to Silver Knot. Uh, but uh, next time out, he was he was running on bottomless ground, and I, you know I'll forgive him that. Uh, so I thought he was I thought he was very interesting, potentially nicely handicapped for Mark of eighty eight. And but also back to rank outsider in Stormbuster, who you know okay, he's a little bit left field because he hasn't beaten a single mm. horse on his last three starts but he has been highly tried he ran in the futurity he's running two derby trials um low ranking ones it has to be said but every single time on soft ground uh and i don't think he wants soft ground i don't think he's stayed either so coming back to a mile on fast ground 
I, you know, I think just think his earlier form would have been with a five left winner at Haynes, Hanson and Clark and, and second enlisted company before that while he was still a maiden. Uh, just makes him quite interesting at a big price and the fact that they're, they're going on with him. Uh, mm. He might have a little bit of class to be that sort of price. He's the rag of the field. What do yeah. you like, Keith? Well, I thank Keels for setting me up nicely with this one. I couldn't remember the Huey Morrison horse that, that won this race and won the Britannia. It was Sagramore, but it sets me up because I actually really fancy Huey Morrison's in this runner, this, this this year's field. We've got Royal Cape in this race, who's actually got a really similar sort of profile to Covey, who's at the top of the betting. And he's only run the three times. There was sort of one back end, all weather made in. Uh, which he went off 100 to 1. So that was obviously just a run for experience. Came out and I thought was a bit unlucky to to lose out to lose your ward, who since improved when he was second at Kempton. And then last time he came out at Windsor in a race that was actually pretty steadily run. And he just absolutely toyed with them. They, they finished at 110% uh, over the last three furlongs. And he just put 10 lengths into them on the bridle. Now, it probably wasn't much of a race, but that's the mark of a horse that's going to end up an awful lot better uh, than, than what he ran to that day, you know, RPR 88, that's the same as his BHA mark. He needs to improve half a stone to win this, but you've got to think that's in him. Uh, and, you know, the, you look at his pedigree, his dam was ultimately a 110 horse, um, you know, he's by Glen Eagles, so that sort of anchors him a mile because the dam stayed pretty well. But so did Sagramore, the Huey Morrison horse that won this race, won the Britannia. He, he ended up staying a mile and a half, I think. So just because they're bound for further in time and Royal Cape might be, shouldn't be putting me off. For me, there's two horses in this race that absolutely stand out in terms of that unexposed progressive profile. One of them's five to two, one of them's 13 to two. Uh, so I'm going with the latter. You've said pretty much all I was going to say, uh, apart from the fact he's got a decent draw, Keith, hasn't he? And Billy Buick is on. Uh, Huey Morrison will do for me in that race as yeah, well. And Buick was on at the uh, five-day stage, I think, as well. So oh, that's yeah. just another little... So they've obviously decided early doors this was the race and Buick wanted some of that action. Keith advertising that he never sleeps. <laughs> all right, so let's move on. We've got the three o'clock coming up. Uh, and it is, of course, the Sandy Lane Stakes. And we revert to the sprinters, but the first group race of the day. We've heard from Roger Varian that Sakir, breaking news on the show, goes straight to the Commonwealth Cup. Well, I think whatever will be winning this will be doing the same. And Keith, I'm going to come up to you if you don't mind about this. Nine to four about Little Big Bear. We've spoken off air and you teased at the top that there might be a horse that should be a little bit shorter. It's got to be him, hasn't it? Yeah, it is him. Um, this is, uh, I mean, I love the Sandy Lane. I love the Commonwealth Cup, really. And this is the best trial for the Commonwealth Cup by Clearwater. Little Big Bear was champion juvenile last year, you know, last seen winning the uh, the Phoenix Stakes at the Curra, which he won by seven lengths. You know, he looks like the horse of Brian's wanted for a long, long time. They want a really good sprinting sire. This little big bear, he showed a lot of precocity and a lot of speed at two. He's also a bit of a stamp of a horse, which is going to help when it comes to his stud value. And not they don't always get proper Commonwealth Cup uh, preps, the horses that Brian sends to the Commonwealth Cup, but little big bear's getting one. I don't think this is the deepest Sandy Lane ever. I mean, Bradsill and Cold Case are both horses I respect, and they'd be very closely matched on that run between them at Ascot last time. But ultimately, you know, I'm looking at the prices and going... I wouldn't have had just a point between Little Big Bear and those two. I had a little bit more daylight between them. And for me, he's the sort of horse that should be hovering in that even money to six to four window. And yet you're getting nine to four, I think, as we're, as we're recording this. Oh, it's a really good race, isn't it, Keith? And uh, all over the fav then. And um, what went wrong in the guineas? I suppose, I don't know. It was, it was all, all well, too he was bad keen. to be true, He it? was keen. He didn't stay. I mean, he, you know, you'd like he was to... He beaten way before Stamina came into it. Yeah, well, they had a bit of a Eclipse Hills moment with the other one as well, or August <laughs> Rodin. But, I mean, it was a terrible run. Now, you know, I mean, you always worry when these horses are precocious whether they're going to train on. Uh, I don't think that's evidence that he hasn't because it was too bad to be true. But he's still got to come back from it. Yeah. I you know I'm, I'm not the sort of person that could jump in at even six to four on that sort of profile. But at the moment, he's not even six to four. Like Keith said, he is nine to four. But, you know, I was looking at this race and I thought the one that the bookmakers have missed has got to be George Bowie's Al Dasim. The one that was running at the start of the season. Well, you know, he, he actually trained trainers twice as a juvenile. Ended up, yeah, all, yeah. Ended, yeah, ended up with George Bowie. Yeah, ended up with George Bowie. Won his last two races for him over here. Then went to Maidan. Won three on the spin, uh, including the Group 3. And then he wasn't beaten very far in Group 1 company. And then three-year-old in Group 1 company in March. I mean, that's, you know, that's an ask and a half. Uh, and he wasn't, you know, he wasn't beaten far, but he, he didn't run up to his to his Group Three winning form. But that Group Three winning form, he won it by miles. He won it very, very easily. Yeah. On racing post racings, he is further clear of every other horse than Little Big Bear is of him 
and obviously his race, his form is far more current than Little Big Bears. And I just thought, I just thought he was a cracking huge Ray bet. He's just going to be in the frame. He's drawn right it's, next it's to a him. proper, it's proper um, anti me Dan bias that isn't it that he's that horse of seven to one. If he'd recorded those sort of figures at home, he would be a lot, lot shorter than seven to one. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, there, there was, you know, there was a chance that he won't come back and do it, but he was starting yeah. to improve before he went. Roger Varian hinted at that, Keith, in the interview that I did with him. He's, he's got a horse called El Drama running at Goodwood, who was touched off in a group race, and then he didn't run, you know, uh, to the eye very well in Group One company. But it's a hell of a dropping grade at Goodwood on Saturday, and you're mm. right, the market seems to have missed it. You could tell that Roger quite fancied that. So, all right, so a bigger price than he should be. We have got another Royal, uh, Royal Ascot winner in here, uh, Brad Sell, of course who was fancy to beat Little Big Bear at the Curry, he got injured. I thought it was a really good comeback. I was at Ascot that day when Cold Case sort of toughed it out. He came there and it looked like he was going to go past for all the money in the world. He just needed it, I think. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go well at all. We've got 1,000 guineas for him advertising here with the third, Matilda Picot. We've got Should Have Been a Rin. Oh, we've got another Royal Ascot winner, the Riddler, of course, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a bad lineup at all. Mm, all right, OK. Uh, Little Big Bear, though, all eyes on him. Fascinating to see. I think it's been pretty much crunch time and Frankie is in the plate as well. What price do you think he'll go off, Keith, just quickly? Oh, um, the Tories are on it's a Saturday, so all those horses are getting sent off far too short this season so far, so you can definitely see him going off more like 6-4, to four, can't you? Yeah, all right, De Tory on. It's a Saturday. Might want to be taking that 9-4 to four at the time of filming. All right, let's go up to York, shall we? It's the aforementioned Group 3 Bronte Stakes, a mile and six for the Phillies. And Roger Varian quite fancied his in this. Do we get the market up on the screen so the guys can tell us what's too short or maybe what might be sticking out? All right, oh yes, of course, we have a hot pot here, don't we? The Gosden's Mimikyu. Uh, C Flawless, of course, for the, uh, for the Haggis Stable, all the way down to Typewriter down the bottom. Interesting race, and there is Voodoo Queen. Roger said it would be around about 20 to 1. Well, that's already being nibbled at. Uh, Kills, what do we like? Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. My first thoughts were Mimikyu's easily the best, but then you go back to that run at York, York last year when she was well, well beaten. I don't like horses that get well beaten at York. I know it's only the evidence of one, one race, but I mean, it does seem to be very much a specialist track and a track that horses do take to or don't take to. Uh, and I don't, you know, I don't think she did. As for what wins it, I couldn't find anything that I was really, really interested in until um, Roger Varian came up with a, uh, with a good point about Voodoo Queen. She is going to like the ground. She won very comfortably on very, very fast ground at, at, at Newmarket last year. So I would take a steer from the trainer because I couldn't really, I wanted to take on Mimikyu, couldn't think about what to do it with. And while double figures is still around, I'd imagine it's going to go once people start hearing what he said about it. Right then, Keith, uh, there's the Bronte Cup. Is this where, I'm, where we should be at the bar? or? Oh, no, not these staying races. They're always quite enjoy one of these. And the actual approach to it is, I mean, the race has got nothing in common really with the, uh, the Silver Cup we're talking about at Haydock earlier. But in terms of how I'm looking at it, uh, there's a bit of similarity there. And you've got a very short and very solid enough Gosden, uh, Gosden horse in there. And there's only one other horse that's got a similar sort of profile that should make it just as attractive. Uh, and yet they're a lot bigger price. We've got C Flawless in here, who is bred to go on and keep keep improving. You know, she's one of those, she's comes from a family of horses that went on and, and became, the damn kit car, I think, stayed nearly two miles in the end. This horse isn't really, she's only run three times, twice over 10F, including when she won at Beverly last time. Just got that progressive sort of profile that, I don't think it would have been missed if this. To the, I mean, this is a haggis horse, and haggis horses never get missed. Yet the the Gosden horse that has at least done it in in group company so far. You know that Park Hill that she won. It's her only um, it's her only run beyond beyond a mile and a half so far. So yeah, I can see why she's favourite. But I just thought see flawless. I thought it was a little bit more promise in her than than maybe six to one's giving her credit for. Daniel Muscat, a very interesting jockey there. You could really see him suiting her. There's another interesting Gosden one in here. And Danny Tuddo has almost got a freebie on one evening. Interesting to see that Alarus is in here because it reminds you that Harry Houston has been added to the Shadwell roster as well. So we're going to learn about this. Not so sure about the favourite, are we? I'll be having a little bit on Voodoo Queen as well on the promise that it's rattling. Back to Haydock we go. It's the Temple Stakes coming up next. And the Platinum Queen now with Roger Varian, as we heard earlier. If you've watched that interview, if you haven't, you want to be going and checking that out because Roger said guys basically she's not been the easiest to train but at 1.2 million guineas for the new connections they are still hopeful that before she goes to the breeding shed there's a big one in it uh keels we've got two similar types at the top of the market we have both got chances I mean platinum the platinum claim was very short earlier in the, in the weeks but twos was she uh 
And I don't think people have realised it. You know, horses, two-year-olds have to make tremendous progress to be able to, uh, to still compete as three-year-olds. You've got to remember the last time she ran, she was getting £21 off the... Uh, uh, off the older horses, and now with a Grade One penalty, Group One penalty, she's got she's getting six. There's a hell of a lot of difference now. You know, she's had six, seven months uh, to improve, but she needs to have done it. And so, for that reason, I would take her on, even you know, without hearing that she's a change stables, be you know, been hard to train. Uh, and I was looking at this, and I thought to myself, you know, I, the one that sort of stood out to me was Russell at the prices each way. I mean, he's won at Haydock, he won the uh, old Achilles, which doesn't, doesn't seem to exist anymore, or at least as a, diff as a different meeting, because it was at this yeah. meeting last year. Yeah. Uh, he won that last year, he was in very, very good form at this time of year last year. He went on and won at Sandown as well in, 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 the, in the charge. Uh, and uh, uh, he's, just, he's just really consistent at this time of year, and he ran really well uh, in the Palace House, uh, finishing fourth, and on ground that just doesn't suit him at all. He doesn't want soft ground. Uh, you know, there are a few horses that are going to come out, and I think start showing that, showing that even though they ran well, they are better than that. And I think he's one of them. And I thought a double figure price was, was big enough to get me interested in. And he's actually drifted since I backed him. I backed him in that Palace House, and it, it was four places yeah. in which he snuck into. And you thought to yourself, he's he's now back on track. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, I backed Get Ahead in that race. It was two points about him, and she's going to win tomorrow, Friday. On that bombshell, uh, <laughs> living, living the dream is in fourteen. The horse that was ahead of Rasel in the Palace House, and I, it, it's just an Adam West thing. This because he should be shorter than nine to one. Kills his point about the three-year-olds is absolutely right. And Keith, something tells me you're taking dead aim at them as well. Oh, absolutely. Now the three-year-olds in this race. I mean, it's. I'm going to get a bit nerdy here because the the weight for age scale is uh, is it's a marvelous thing. Can you imagine that in a Victorian era going? You know, we need to average out the average horse. At two weekly intervals over every trip, and Admiral Roos went, "Oh yeah, hold my port," and he went away and drew up that. It was, it's, it's, inc but it Keels's point is absolutely right. She was getting seventeen pounds in the Abbey. She was a very forward horse. Now she's getting an awful lot less. Uh, so it's um, I would be very much getting against a Platinum Queen. Her success last year was almost entirely predicated on her her being so precocious, and that edge is getting taken away from her as the weight for age scale catches up. I, I think the thing is, this is a, such an open race. The actual bet in this race, if you're having one bet, is to lay the Platinum Queen because it's a very, very competitive race in behind. Dramatised, I think, is far more likely to go on at three. You've got Twilight Calls, who I thought shaped easily second best behind that freak Australian in the King's Stand last year. Royal Acclaim still got untapped potential and could have been excused what she did at Longchamp last time. I wouldn't be surprised if with Bahi Russell, who Keels gave a mention to, he could also run a big race. I wouldn't even be totally amazed if Equality snuck minor money no, in this sort of company. No, uh, no, no, actually, no. Bit of love for Equality in the he's, studio. Then, he's got a fair amount of talent if he puts it together, isn't oh, he? Yeah, that's why a, people don't like sprinters, yeah, isn't it? Because it's a, such a tricky He's a command. frustrating horse, isn't he? But he is, he yeah. is amazing yeah, he's, twice he's, at the same time. Go on, Keith. Exactly. He's had, you know, he won here. He finally got his day here. He won on his ear uh, last September and then ran at Ascot. He's not really an Ascot horse. He needs it to be a sharp five. He's got loads and loads and loads of speed. And the Palace House would have just taken taken the sort of freshness out of him. I can see him running a big race and getting minor money. It's just such a deep race, I think, this. Now, the British and Irish and European generally five funnel horses aren't all that. Anything from Australia or, or further afield can come across and, and give them a good spanking. But in this context and among themselves, they're actually a really interesting division. Mm. Uh, there's loads of could back in this race, but all it traces back to is the Platinum Queen's taking out far too much of this book and, and getting against her is the one bet to have in this race. Let's do something that we learned from our lives Saturdays together, Keith. What price does she become unlayable at? Because I've got, I wouldn't be surprised if she went off like fourth favourite or something like that. Well, that's right. Yeah. Oh God, what? What price should we come unlayable at? It's not something I'd necessarily think about. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare layer it. You know, when she gets, but when they, when she drift, when they drift out, all of a sudden you're thinking, well, that means it's today's not. The day I, I, I couldn't say that one. It's not something we I sort of think, but I'm just looking at threes and going, no, absolutely not. I would, I wouldn't be backing her at double the price for sure. Let's flip that then to a man that looks at it this way. What price would you go? That sticks out like a sore thumb, and I've just got a back. Oh God, I mean. You know, if she if she went out to like eight, you'd, you'd you'd have to be tempted, wouldn't you? But I don't fancy her at all. I think she's I do think she's way too short, uh, simply because of you know the, the big weight difference, the trainer change, 
You know what I mean? She's just, you know, she's got a lot to, she's got a lot to overcome. I, mean, I was very surprised to, to hear. <laughs> I was very surprised to hear that she was hard to train because that horse just gave the impression last year of being a very easy one to train. Yeah, and it was aggressive you know, was... two-year-old campaign, wasn't it? Of course. He's... Well, you've got to, um, you know, you've got to acclimatise at a new yard as well, haven't you? Maybe he he also thing. said that Richard Fire had been a complete gentleman and told him maybe some tricks at a trade with her, you know, and all that sort of stuff. I mean, Richard did his job, didn't he? It was a syndicate mm. also. They were absolutely quits yeah, well, in. Maybe he all... put him away, and that's why no, she's but... been out of the track. <laughs> what's far he got in this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So what's on top for Keith then? Lay the platinum. What's the most likely winner? Oh, I'm, I'm, what am I going to back? I mean, the likeliest winner is Twilight Calls because with that run behind him, he's possibly the best British and Irish five hurdle horse besides uh, Highfield Princess. And uh, yeah, he's, he'd be the likeliest winner. But honestly, there are potentially four or five bets I could have in this race. And what I do will depend on what the prices are when I when I come to look and, you know, if one drifts out a little bit or whatever, but yeah, he's going to be the likeliest winner. My The one bet to have is to lead a platinum queen. I just Are you going to lay four that. places as well? I'll think about it. I would definitely <laughs> think about it. Yeah. All right, okay, yeah. I, I see what you mean, though. Your point being, if if today's not the day, you could be 80 to one, never mind 8 to one. Uh, well, look, it's fascinating to hear about and dramatised, but there's loads of other angles in. We think that the older sprinters will be doing it. Shall we go across the Irish Sea then? Because it's classic time again, 3.40. It is the Irish 2,000 guineas. And, uh, well, in a in a weird sort of flip on what we're used to through the winter, looks like we might be taking home the booty here domestically because the Brits are descending and we have the supplemented Royal Scotsman at the top of the market. Third, of course, in our 2,000 guineas behind High Royal. We'll see what the guys think about that form. Uh, there's Charrington at 16 to 1. We heard from Roger, put a line through it. It was one of those weird races. He was on maybe the wrong side. They all got in each other's way a little bit. And on the far side, Chaldean et al. went clear. Uh, 7 to 4 then kills. And I came to Keith with the Sandy Lane little big bear. This is one that you said at the top of the show. We look for ones that maybe ought to be sort of even money or even skinnier. Yeah, um, well, Scotsman should be near even money to me. Um, it's one of those I just watched that race. I mean, obviously, I was invested in, so there's a bit of, po talk, po bit of pocket talk going on. But he was on the wrong side. He was ridiculously keen. Uh, and he still burst clear of all the others on his side. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he is the best miler around. Uh, I was... Very, very much looking forward to backing him against Chaldean if he hadn't have come here when they go to mm. when they go to Royal Ascot. Well, you're going to uh, get your chance if he uh, comes through. Well, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I won't get the price. I probably would have got. Would I? But I mean, that doesn't that doesn't matter. I think <laughs> I think he's head and shoulders the best. Uh, and you know, obviously they've supplemented him because he did a you know apparently a, a wonderful piece of work in the week. I think everything's there for him. He'll turn around the form with High Royal. I think he'll win quite comfortably. Yeah, uh, listen, I'm I'm with you all the way. It's an interesting jockey booking, uh, isn't it? We'll get to that though. Uh, Keith, a lot has said about this before the supplementary of Ollie Cole's crack. What we hope to be a minor Royal Scotsman being one of the weakest Irish two thousand guineas we've seen. Uh, you're nodding. Yeah, yeah, it's there to be one, isn't it? Yeah, well, OK, all right. That was nice and short and succinct from Keith again. It, 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 is this just a certainty then? With, because we've got Spencer on here, haven't we? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, if you've got a horse that was that was a bit far off the pace there. last time, I'm going to put Spencer on next time. But, I mean, that's by the by. He probably is the best horse in this race. And it's a, it's a week old race. I'm, I'm still of the view that even if he's the best of what we saw in the Guineas, that that doesn't necessarily set the very highest bar. Um, so you know, I think it's a race that is a little bit there to be won. To be honest, it's it's not that likely I'll bet, and it. it's not my division as such. The, but on the basis that it is a race that's there to be won, I was fairly well taken by uh, how Karshamar won at Dundalk. It was 16s that day. Obviously, wasn't really thought to be ready. That was only his second run, having run at the Curra in the autumn just to get his experience at the track. The pedigree is all minor group winning milers on the continent. So you can certainly imagine this is a horse that ends up 110 plus. You can back him at getting on for 20s as as we record. And if he runs to 110, 150, you might well get in the three. So he's what I sort of put up as a suggestion. But I would certainly defer to you boys on saying that Royal Scotsman's the likeliest winner. Yeah, absolutely. I, I must admit, I looked at this and I thought, well done, Ollie and Paul, for supplementing. Because I don't think it was just on the case of the sparkling one. Surely someone's told them or maybe something to do with the haze and you mentioned of course about the jamie spencer retainership with the owners he he, he rides for them lows but it is yeah. a very interesting angle having spencer on it yeah i mean if you can get him to settle i mean you know this i mean look he you know it might just he just had the freshness run out of him in that guineas 
Well, he didn't settle that day, yeah. and he still produced a turn of foot to go clear of the others. I mean, if he get if he settles down, uh, and hopefully Jamie will get him set down and not ride him stone cold last, um, you know, because you always have to worry about that. But I mean, I do think he's the best horse in the race. Some of Jamie Spencer's best ever rides have come at the Curragh. So yeah, he knows it brilliantly. And uh, isn't that going to be fun to watch? What wins it then? Are we right or are we wrong? Let us know below. There's your previews. All right, that time many of you have been waiting for. It is the weekend winner section. But before we do that, you might want to avail yourself of some free bets. There you go, over £200 in free bets. Let's go up then. Betting editor takes the floor. Yeah, uh, best bet of the race is on the telly this weekend would be Little Big Bear in the uh, Sandy Lane at Haydock. With a Platinum Queen chaser on the lay side as well. Love it. Uh, okay, Kills. Uh, yeah, well, Scotsman takes out the Iris 2000 for Paul and Oliver Cole. I tell you what, you two are seeing the ball pretty big this weekend, aren't I hope you? So. I'm usually having to scroll down and see if we go to Newcastle or anything like that. Well, I'll go in the Temple Stakes then. And if you're looking at putting in a Trixie, put in Living the Dream for Adam West, Sean Curran. I think he's been overlooked on that Palace House one. He's going to burn them all off. There are your naps. Well, sadly, that is all we've got time for on this weekend's What a Shout. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Roger Varian and the team. Uh, Kills? A great weekend ahead. Yeah, thoroughly looking forward to it. Some decent racing. Good handicaps to get stuck in. Will you be chasing your tail after the Brigadier Joe on night? Yeah, so well, you're depends going, how we're going. Yeah, you're I'm going with the team, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm going with the team. We'll, be, we'll, we'll have a good night there and hopefully still have some money left to invest with it. Mm. That's that hate All right, all the best, Kills. Keith, it's been great to have you back on. Line of the show, hold my port. <laughs> good old Admiral <laughs> Rose. <laughs> I didn't have to hold me point, but hold me paw. So we do up there. Keith, it's been great to have you on. Enjoy the weekend, man. Cheers, Dave. Good stuff. All right, then. Uh, OK, don't forget, of course, if you want to get ahead this weekend, do download the free Racing Post app. Yes, it's must have. And I just said, it's free. Get it done now. You can get involved and get in, you know, get your teeth stuck into that form. Good luck to the Brits going over to Ireland this weekend. Friend of the show, Ollie Cole and Paul. Wow, wouldn't that be some scenes? From myself, Dave Orton, responsible gambling. Do remember it and enjoy that sport. Mm -hmm.